over the last few videos, we've written some really important code. There was the exact drive program that had the robot drive a specific distance. There's the exact turn program that had the robot turn a specific amount of uh, degrees. Now to be efficient and save time, I don't want to rewrite that code every time I want to use it. I want to make a library of that functionality. So I've made a new file, an empty file, called drive library. I'm going to copy over that code that had our robot drive a specific distance. And paste it into our library. Now we're going to have to change it because this is not a main program anymore. We want to create a function. And that function is going to need a very specific name. And we need to give it inputs and then tell what output it'll give and then put the code and instructions that it's going to do on the inside of the curly braces. All right, so this is no longer the main program. It's going to be a function that we can use to have our robot drive a specific distance. So let's name it drive distance. To the left of the function name is the output. And we're not outputting a task. We're going to output nothing. And that's going to be the word void. Void is used for returning nothing. Now in the parentheses we need to give the inputs. That means the information the function needs. Well to drive a certain distance we need to know the motors. So we put first T motor because that's the type and then we need to give the name. So T motor left motor, T motor right motor. We also need to know the diameter of the wheels which is a float and we need to know the distance that we want to go, and that is also a float. Since the user of this function is going to give us a diameter, we can remove that code from our current implementation. We can also remove the distance to go, because that's what the person will type into the parentheses. Now, later on, we don't know that the people using this function will be using motor B and motor C. So we need to replace those with the names left motor and right motor from above in our function definition. So our left motor should be motor B, our right motor should be motor C, and we need to replace those so that we can handle any motors that the user wants. And that's it. We have created a new function similar to the functions that you would see in the function library. Let's make a function for driving a turn. So we'll go into exact turn and copy that code that we wrote into our drive library. Alright, now it's pasted into my drive library and we need to change it. Again, it's not a main task anymore. It's going to be a function. And this function needs a name, a specific name. So this code turns a robot, so we're going to call it drive turn. And it's not going to return any information, so it's going to have void is it its output. And now we need to give the inputs. Well, we need to know the motors so that we can turn. We need to know the sensor for the gyro and we also need to know how many degrees to turn. Alright, so the user is going to give us the degrees to turn so we can remove that and I'm going to change up this code so that it's a little bit easier. I'm just going to set the motors that they give us Remember it's turning, so the motors need to go in opposite directions. So one's going to be positive while the other one's going negative. And just like above in the drive distance function, we need to replace the names of the motors to the ones that are being given in the drive turn definition. So motor B will be left motor. Motor C will be right motor. We can handle any motor situation then that the user gives us. So that may seem like a lot of crazy hard work and you may be wondering really why are we doing this? 
Well, now let's say we want to make a new program where our robot drives in a square. Well, let's set up our motors and sensors for the program like we normally would. So I got left motor, right motor, and I need a gyro sensor. So we set that all up just like normal. Now we need to include the library. So you can go up here and put pound, which is the pound sign, and then put include, space, a quotation mark, and then drive library. Give it the name of the file, .c, and then another closing quotation mark. And now we can use those functions that we wrote in that library. We can use them over and over. So now I can call drive distance, give it the name of my left motor, because that's what we said we would give it first. Second, we need to give the right motor. That's what we said we would do. Third, we promise to give the diameter. So I give it the diameter, and those wheels were 2 and an eighth. And the fourth piece of information was how far we wanted to drive. And so I need to make sure that those are both in inches. And that's it. That's all we need to do now from now on to make our robot drive straight. Now, let's say I need to make a 90 degree turn for the square. I use that drive turn function that we wrote. We've got to give the motors, the turn sensors, and the degree. So drive turn, left motor, right motor. I need to give the name of the gyro sensor that we put up at the top. And finally I want to turn 90 degrees. Copy this and paste it. We could put it in a loop or whatever, but so that it goes four times and then download it and try it out. Hopefully you can see the value of creating these functions and then being able to reuse them over and over.